Hello, Inders TV viewers and listeners. Ken Power reported today the third quarter report, and we are doing an interview with company CEO Tomi Ristimäki. Hello, Tomi. Hello, Pauli. Nice to be here again. So uh, your sales growth was strong and operative EBIT almost 20% of sales. How was Q3 from your perspective? I think the key for this reason was, was profit, profitability when we were looking at huge growth in the Q2. Um, it was also the affected the revenue was the fact that we, we have a logistic dealer in UK having 10 million euro shipment uh, going to UK customer that is waiting in the logistics center being delivered now. So couldn't book it as a revenue. So would have been uh, nice to show even nicer numbers. So uh, if we take a look to new order intake, it, it declined year on year. Are you surprised about this and why did it happen? I, I think it's 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 due to our, it's a good good to look at that we have a 10 million euro shipment in UK. It tells us about the business case that shipments, orders, single orders can be quite large. And this fluctuation between the quarters uh, can be seen. So if the order comes one week late and then it's in, on the next quarter, or looking at in June that there was fairly large order in the end of June. So if it would have been Q3, then we would have more even even curve. But I, I think it, you have to look at the Kempo business in a, in a year on year basis as the full year, because the quarter is quite short time without delivery times today. Exactly. So so how does the market demand look like? Do you see any slowdown? Uh, because of the tough macroeconomic conditions. No, I, I think it's 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 still for DC charging. Uh, we are seeing that there is lack of uh, infrastructure on the market when we look at even the current number of cars, and even the percentage of electric vehicle in certain markets has slowed down in percentage. But if we look at the number of cars, it's still growing. It's growing actually pretty strong. So and. Last year was a huge growth in the EV. So if you look at two years ago, then we see a huge jump on the percentage as well. So I think it's a fact that, uh, of course, there is some uh, influence in the EV market. But as we are looking at that, there's lacking infrastructure and almost like investment debt. We don't see the short term impact of that in the DC charging. So the demand is still still there. That's That's how we see it. Yes. So uh, you are expanding to US. Uh, how do you feel about the factory ramp up and the sales pipeline in USA? Looks good. I was just actually I came to this meeting having the quarterly report to our American uh, employees who, who were gathered there for the breakfast in the meeting room. So it's a different timeline gives new challenges, of course. And, and it's a pity that you cannot visit there every week and see how the progress is going. But I saw some pictures and, and, and things. I think we are getting ready to the production phase. I think we will be in timeline before the end of 2023. And it's been also a positive uh, movement on, on what kind of uh, customers we can talk with and what are in, in our sales pipeline or, or intake has been picking up. So it looks positive, but of course, it's a new market uh, compared to Europe. Uh, it's not an old market for electric vehicle charging in Europe either, but let's say it's older market than US. And there is, let's say, also a lot of talk, uh, and and mm. you have to make more uh, offers than to to make your sales, and to be in every table. So this is, of course, for newcomer in the market, this is a challenge, and, and we are recruiting sales force to actually be able to be able to be in the right tables. So this is definitely startup market, but very interesting one, and we are looking at actually the the navy funds to kick in as as we get the buy American compliance with the assembly in US. So this, as said before, is, is, is kind of the key key points in, in, in the future growth in in few few years, few next years in US to be able to be producing American made goods to comply with the fund requirements. So lots of work to do, but but also progress and and good potential progress and, and it brings me back a few years. It would be actually more more nice to be there starting things and, and it's 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 a different things happening. It's a completely different uh, I think status if we look at Kempo Inc. and we look at Kempo in Europe. And then we are here here growing a fairly large company compared to a couple of years ago and this is uh, the beginning in US, but it was also nice to see that we have already 5% of the revenue is coming from the North American market in Q3. 
you have made some significant progress in the field of truck charging lately. The growth potential is obviously high, but but how does that market look like for you currently, like right now? Do you think it may offer material uh, revenue growth next year? I, I think it's the news. Uh, we are hoping, of course, that Mylands builds the whole network next year, which is, of course, com- not completely possible, but it is a significant uh, move in the market that the truck manufacturers are getting together uh, to have a joint network. And I think it's more clear in the truck and commercial vehicle market. In personal car market, you always argue, do you need first charging infrastructure or or the vehicles? But in truck market, it's very clear you need first the infra because it's a business decision and the logistic companies will not uh, invest in electric vehicles. And I think this is the main target for the Mylands cooperation between the truck companies as well. So to actually boost the sales of, of EV trucks. And very interesting to see uh, if you see a uh, presentation from companies like Scania and Volvo, they are already showing that 10% of their total production volumes will be EVs by 2025. So these are quite uh, strong statements from, from uh, the biggest manufacturers. So there must be chargers when those hit. There must be, otherwise they cannot sell the vehicles. So it's, yeah. it's also why the why I think the Mylands was was founded, and it's uh, the first big sites. What we are seeing, like the Watt Hub in the Netherlands, uh, there's three megawatt site for charging. We have the Falcon Lab in in Sweden, and we have a Jöteborg site, which are fairly big ones in in Nordic sense. But of course, this will require a lot if if we look at the, especially the long haul is a challenge that you need a solid network. And that comes to the megawatt charging discussion as a, let's say, uh, let's say bridge to that. Yeah. Yes. And you just uh, introduced yours, megawatt charging solution. Yes, so. and, uh, and, and we have our, our let's say, uh, it's a whole program what we are doing. Actually, it's, it's not a single product as we see it. Uh, there will be probably several releases in the coming years. And the charging standard is not completely ready. So in the meanwhile, they will be using CCS uh, software by with MCS equipment. So this is more the, I would say, proof of concept deliveries for the test routes for, for actually developing the system. The standard is getting ready by end of 2024. And we have also made the first deliveries in the way that we can update the software, update the things what are needed if, if things change with the standard says. Okay, so you are well prepared then. Yes. When the time comes. Thank you, Tommy, for the interview. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. <laughs>